overall overtake days on end. You had Imam Amish. If you look up, if you open the Sahih of Al-Bukhari, in many, many places you will see Haddathana Al-A'mashu. The word Amish, the name Amish. Why? Imam Amish was from amongst the Kibar al from the great masters of Hadith. No Billy. How big of a master? This man from his head, from the top of his head, could recite 4,000 hadith without making a mistake. 4,000 hadith, my friends. No joke. Up to 70 years of his life, this man did not miss takbir ula takbir ula And he comes... Now, he wasn't so handsome, but his wife was beautiful. And she was always looking for an excuse to get out of the marriage. So they would regular have, you know, the normal things that happen between husband and wife, argue. One day they had an argument, and she took an oath that she would not speak to him. Now Imam Amish would speak to her, but she wouldn't respond. He tried everything. Fed up. He said, if you don't speak to me before this night comes to an end, then you're divorced. When he cooled down, as is the case with every one of us, we all regret. Now, his beautiful wife is rejoicing. But it's out of his hands, the balls are of his court. There's nothing that he can do about it because he's already uttered the words. Parishan, worried, doesn't know the solution to the answer. He comes to Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi. This is a man who knew 4,000 hadith of my heart. Now, in the early days, his character wasn't favorable to Imam Abu Hanifa. So when he came and he was in need, he began to apologize. Imam Abu rahmatullah alayhi was a great man. He said, there's no need to apologize. Tell me, my brother, how can I help you? He related the problem to him. Imam Abu rahmatullah alayhi said, there's nothing to worry. He called the Mu'azzin of Kufa and related the problem to him and told him to give the Adhan for Fajr before the time begins. Imam Amish went home. The Mu'addin did as Imam Hanifa rahmatullah Ali said, and gave the Adhan before Fajr began, before, before the time for prayer. As soon as his wife heard the Adhan, she began to rejoice. Thinking that I haven't spoken to my husband the entire night. Today's Shruti, holiday, Christmas. I'm going home to my mother's. And she began to rejoice and say, Oh, praise to Allah who has relieved me from you, you ill-tempered man. <laughs> and Imam Amish rahmatullah Ali began to smile and say, to my wife, you're still my wife. This was just a ploy, and may Allah have mercy of Abu, on Abu Hanifa that today he has saved my marriage. <laughs> on another occasion, they had another argument. And this time he took an oath that if you ever tell me the altar is finished, the flower, she must have had an argument with regards to not probably cook, cooking chapai, Allah knows best. <laughs> Which is quite common today, boys. <laughs> so we all know. So he, he took an oath that if you ever tell me the Atta is finished, by word of mouth, or you write it down, or you tell somebody else to tell me, or you indicate or point towards it, then my dear, you're divorced and you're going home. Now his wife was puzzled because they had children and, you know, Atta was a necessity. It wasn't, you know, those days where women were roaming around, you know, to and fro all the time. Women were in generally at home and, you know. So she was uh, puzzled. Came to Imam Anifa rahmatullah alayhi. And Imam Anifa rahmatullah alayhi said to her, okay, there's nothing to worry about. And many of these people had already tried many scholars before but couldn't get solutions. He told her on the spot of the morning, okay, there's nothing to worry about. When he goes to sleep at night, take the flower bag and tie it to his pants. <laughs> when he wakes up in the morning to take his pants, automatically himself he'll realize that the flower bag is empty. When he went to sleep, this is exactly what she did. So when Imam Ahmash woke up in the morning to take his pants, whether he saw that he's pulling the flower bag, and realized there and then that the flower was empty. And Imam Ahmash understood that and then he said, you know what? This only and only could be Imam Abu Hanifa's strategy. That he's the only one that could, you know, come out with a solution. And then he said, how could we ever be successful in our lives? This man has gone as far as embarrassing us before our wives. Allah had blessed him, you know, it was remarkable. The intellect that Allah had given him was remarkable. On one occasion, a man took an oath. But, 
Today, during the day, he will not take the, a bath from the big impurity, from Janabat. He took another oath that today he will not miss a single prayer during the day. And then he took a third oath that he will definitely come to his wife sexually as a man comes to his wife. So he took three oaths. He will not take a bath from the big impurity during the day. He will not miss a single prayer during the day. And the third oath that he took is that he will definitely come to his wife sexually during the day. These are the three oaths that he took. If not, his wife's divorced. Now people were puzzled, how can you solve this problem? His wife's definitely gone. Imam Ali Rahmatullah Ali told him there's nothing to worry. After Asr, come to your wife as a man comes to his wife, sexually. Wait till the sun sets. As soon as the sun sets, go have your bath. Then immediately return and offer your Maghrib Salah. Your wife will not be divorced. Because not a single condition will have been met. You know, the intellect that Allah gave him, Ali ibn Asim said, and Ali ibn Asim wasn't wrong. He said, the intellect that Allah had given this one man, if that was placed in one part of the balance, and the intellect of half of the ummah of Rasulullah was placed on the second part of the balance, the intellect of Abu Hanifa would outweigh them. And with this intellect, Allah gave him such sharpness, hazir jawab. You know, there and then he knew the solution and could respond and answer. You now you get... People are highly intellectual, but you know, they don't have this sharpness or hazard job that they can respond there and then on the spot. Allah had blessed them with this also. Abu Abbas Astusi was known to be one of the enemies of Abu Munifa Rahmatullahi. And he was always looking for an opportunity to have a go at him. Now one day they're in the gathering of Khalifa Ja'far al-Mansur. All the people are there. And Abu Hanifa Rahmatullahi is also there. When Abu Abbas Atusi saw Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullahi in the gathering with evil intention. He said to himself, you know, today I will make sure that he is beheaded in this gathering. Now in front of the Khalif, he asked him a question. And the question was, he oh Abu Hanifa, what happens is, is the Khalif, he orders us to behead people. And the person that is going to be beheaded, we do not know as to why he is being beheaded. Should we carry out that command or not? Now the Kharif Jafar Mansur is there, all the people are there in the gathering. What he was expecting Amal Ibn Rahmatullahi to say was, okay, if you do not know why that person is being beheaded, you shouldn't carry out the command. That's what he was expecting him to say. Which would have definitely got Imam Ibn Rahmatullahi beheaded. Imam Ibn Rahmatullahi was a very sharp man, he understood. So he threw the ball in his court and said, tell me, the command that the Khalif gives, is that valid or invalid? Now how is Abu Abbas Atusi going to say in front of the Khalif that his commands are invalid? It would have got him beheaded. <laughs> so he said, okay, the commands that he gives are valid. So he said, if that's the case, then why is there a need to, a need to ask the question? You know, the Khalif Abu Jafar Mansur himself once said to him, he wanted to give him the position of Qazi al Quda, Chief Justice. And Abu Hanif Rahmatullah refused. So Khalifa Jafar Mansur said to him, okay, you're a liar. Imam Ali Rahmatullah Ali said, okay, Jazakallah, you've just decided that I'm not fit for this position because a liar cannot be appointed as Chief Justice. You know, the intellect that Allah, you know, these stories, my friends, you can read all night. And you know, the biographies that have been written on this one scholar, not, no other scholar, no other scholar has had that many biographies written on him and written by different scholars, whether they are Maliki, Shafi, Hanbali, you name it, as Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullah Ali has had written upon him. Just like the Seerid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, how many books of... There is no personality ever that has had that much written on him as our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has had written on him. No aspect has been left from his hair, from his beautiful face, from the way his hands were, from the way his feet was, from the way he walked, from the way he talked. Books and books. And Imam Hanif Rahmatullah was another one of these personalities that has received such qabuliyat. You know, his nights were for, worth, were for seclusion. What type of seclusion? Imam Khuzri Rahimullah says when he died, one of the neighbors, the son said to the father, 
کہ آئین تلک دعام اللہی کنتو اراہ کل لیلت فی سطح ابی حنیفہ کہ ویز دا پلر دا ای ود سی پرچ آن دا روف آب ابو حنیفہ ایوری نائٹ دا فادر سیت تا سن کہ مائی سن دا وز نو پلر دا وز نن ادر دن دا پلر آب اسلام امام حنیفہ رحمت اللہ علیہ ای ود سپن ایز نائٹ ان ورشپ انہا مصر ابن قدام who himself, now this person, Musa ibn Qadam, my friends, was so pious himself that this man died. When he died, he died in the state of prostration. He relates this. He says, one night I was in the masjid and I saw this man, he was reading the Quran in such a beautiful voice. Such a beautiful voice that I was mesmerized and I began to listen to him. He read and kept on reading till he read a third of the Quran. I thought he was going to Ruku. He kept on reading. I thought he'll go into Ruku. He did not go into Ruku till he read the entire Quran in one rakat. Entire Quran in one rakat. He says, then I waited to see who this person was. It was none other than Imam Abu Nifa rahmatullah alayhi. He would spend the entire night reciting the whole Quran he would read in one rakat. Asad ibn Umar rahimahullah says that for 40 years of his life, more or less, he read his morning prayer with the wudu that he made for Isha. Now according to his own opinion, you could only do that if you spend the entire night awake. Because according to the school of thought of Abu Hanifa, if you sleep, your wudu breaks. And he did this for more or less, this was his general practice for 40 years of his life. You know, nowadays you will find a very minority, a small minority, whose uh, ikhtilaf or difference doesn't harm us, who seem to find it very difficult to digest any virtue that has been attributed to Imam Abu Anifa rahmatullahi They find it difficult to digest anything. And they will raise objections. People can believe this, and you and me do this, we can spend our entire night with our beloved. Isn't that a fact? Just looking at her beautiful face. Or texting the entire night. And you know, texting nonsense. And we can spend the entire night on the internet. But people find it difficult. That, uh, uh, you know, that godly people can spend the entire night with their creator. People find it difficult. My friends, this is just the weakness of Iman. This is the weakness of their Iman. Why? Because they make chaos upon themselves. They look at themselves that they struggle. You know, when they open the book of Allah, they struggle to read a page. You know, it takes them about an hour. So they think everyone's like this. They think everyone's like this. By the grace of Allah, there are people in this day and age still alive. They have such love for Allah and His Rasul and His Kalam that they read the entire Quran in one day. You know, in this 21st century, the era of fitna, even in this era, there are people that read the entire Qur'an every day. You know, our Ustad, Allah, give him a long life, Mullah Abdurrahim Sahib, reads 30 Qur'ans without fail, what, what I know of in the month of Ramadan. Every day, one Qur'an. Every day, one Qur'an. That's on top of living a normal life. Imam Anif Rahmatullah Ali used to read one Qur'an every day. In the month of Ramadan, following our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because in the month of Ramadan, even our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to exert himself even more. He used to wake up the Azwaj Mutaharat in the last nights and not let them sleep and exert himself even more. Do you understand? Imam Hanifa Rahmatullah Alayhi in the month of Ramadan used to recite the Quran 60 times. And for those that find it difficult to digest this, maybe you can say, you know, this person who's delivering this lecture is a Hanafi and he's probably biased towards him. You know, Haq will always prevail. Haq will always prevail. You know, the people that have related these virtues and attributed them to Abu Hanifa, many of them are not even Hanafis. They're Shafi'is. You had Ibn Khalliqan, a great master from the Shafi'i al Maslak, he's related to all these virtues. You have Abu Naim, Sahib Hilya, a great master, Shafi'i, he's related to all these virtues. You have Khatib Baghdadi, 
very famous Shafi'i scholar. He is related to all these virtues. You have Jalaluddin Siyuti rahmatullah alayhi. He is related to all these virtues. You have Ibn Hajr al machi who was a Shafi'i. He is related to all these virtues. But okay, let me take you a step further. And you have the great Zahabi. And my friend, these scholars that I'm taking names of, anybody that has any knowledge of a hadith, these are all agreed upon. These are masters. You know, you can't compete with these people. You know, world hasn't seen scholars like this. Imam Zahabi goes a step further. And Imam Zahabi says that these worships and this, you know, this ibadah that Imam Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi would do during the night is proven from khabar mutawatir Anyone who has any knowledge with regards to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi automatically will know khabar mutawatir is the most authentic source of evidence. So there is no doubt. No doubt whatsoever. And now let me add to this. It wasn't just the practice of Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi. All our Salafu Salihin, if you study the lives of our Salafu Salihin, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala would recite the entire Quran in one rakat. Tamim Dari radiallahu ta'ala anu would recite the entire Quran in one rakat. Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anu would recite the entire Quran in one rakat. Waki ibn Jarrah would recite the entire Quran in one rakat. Imam Bukhari would recite the entire Quran in one rakat. Imam Shafi'i would do this. Balki Imam Shafi'i rahmatullah alayhi in the month of Ramadan, like, like Imam Abu Hanifa, would recite 60 Qur'ans on one occasion with regards to Imam Shafi'i rahmatullah alayhi. It has been reported that looking for a particular problem in the Qur'an, in three days he recited the Qur'an nine times. Imam Shafi'i recited the Qur'an nine times in three days, which averages out three a day. Such was the love that Imam Hanifa rahmatullah alayhi had for the Qur'an, that not only would he recite the entire Qur'an, the adab and ihtaram that he had, that the day his son just learnt Bismillah rahman rahim he gave his ustaz 500 dirhams. And the day his son finished Al-Fatiha, he gave his ustaz 5,000 dirhams, and he said to his ustaz, Wallahi law kana indi aksara min zalik, ladafa'nahu ta'zeeman lil-Qur'an. I swear by Allah,